evening, everyone. Glad you have joined us tonight. We're on Victory Church in Providence, Facebook, live streaming. And I want to encourage you, please, if uh, you know of anybody that has not liked our page and doesn't have access to it, even though they can get to it without being on Facebook, please uh, just let them know of Victory Church in Providence. Um, if you haven't liked it, please like it. And also, I just want to encourage you, while we're waiting for people to come online, we have about uh, quite a few of you watching, I'd like to also ask you to let us know where you're watching from. We have had, this past Sunday, people from watching in Nigeria, China, in uh, Canada, in Kenya, and other parts of the world. So let us know where you're watching from. Please post and share uh, this, this live streaming tonight. This past Sunday, I really made an appeal and asked if you would, uh, if we could get at least 50 people to share, and we had 56. So that was, that was awesome. Really appreciate it. So just want to encourage you to just do the same. Share it with others. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our podcast and or our uh, YouTube channel, please do so. If you can subscribe to that, that'd be, a, that'd be great. Another way for us to communicate with you. Um, so hope you're doing well tonight. We welcome you. And uh, we're just going to believe God for his blessing upon this evening. This past Tuesday, actually yesterday, we had a very successful food drive, uh, food, food drive through actually. Uh, we literally had people pull up, we made them stay in their car, they popped their trunk, uh, opened the back seat, all of our workers wore gloves, masks, make sure we're being safe, being wise, but we want to reach out and be a blessing to the community, to people, and we gave away to 87 families. I don't know what was the 87 number. I guess that's just what we were filling up. So we're going to do it again uh, Tuesday. So we're so grateful. We blessed 87 families. Think of uh, children, uh, maybe four or 500 people we're able to impact and love on and encourage during this difficult time. So we're going to do that again Tuesday. So we look forward to just... Um, uh, once again, being the church outside of the four walls of the building. Encourage you. We know Sunday, 10 o'clock, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Next week, next uh, week is actually Holy Week. It's Good Friday. We're going to have a Good Friday service. And again, live streaming. And want to encourage you to uh, get some juice, some crackers, and partake with us. We're going to do communion and in your homes, wherever you are. Uh, wouldn't that be awesome if we can join together as a body, a community of faith, and partake and remember uh, what Jesus did on the cross. So just prepare for that. That's next Friday, and uh, we look forward to that. So tonight, just want to encourage you once again, something I've said before, feed your faith and starve your fears. How do you feed your faith? You feed your faith through the Word of God, through worship, through prayer. And the truth of the matter is, whatever you feed will grow, and what you starve will die. And we need our fears to die. Amen. We need our fears to subside. I'm going to pray in a moment, and Rachel is going to lead us in a couple of uh, worship uh, choruses, something that we can just lift up our hearts to God and, and truly worship Him. Worship Him in your homes, in your cars, your workplace, wherever you are, and uh, just unite together. You know, at this time, we could be inundated with so many different uh, Facebook posts and social media posts and hear and see so many preachers. And, and even, you know, what's been uh, amazing is uh, the other night, I think it was T.D. Jakes on one of the major news networks was asked to pray and he prayed in Jesus name. And that was awesome to hear him pray at such a time as this. But, you know, there's so many great and godly leaders out there who have a great following, they have a lot of notoriety. Uh, many of them, they're, they're real leaders and gen generals in the faith. And I've listened to them, you've listened to them, maybe you've listened to uh, Franklin Graham, T.D. Jakes, Jim Simbler, and whoever your favorite preacher besides me is, um, you've listened to. And you know, I've listened to them at this time because I wanna 
I want to hear what they have to say because they are such uh, uh, great men uh, of faith, great women of faith, whoever they might be. They're real leaders and, and, and have such notoriety. And I just was listening to see what they'd say and expecting to hear something really profound. And you know what I heard? I heard what we all have been saying and what we all realize. You know what they've been saying? We need to pray more. We need to read the scriptures more. We need to draw near to God. We need to love one another. And it's just, it's just that simple. A lot of times we look for some silver uh, bullet, bullet some, some key that's going to open that door or some uh, fantastic new idea. But you know what? It's really the simplicity of our faith. It's accessible to all of us. And you know what? There's a scripture in Genesis chapter 4 verse 26. It says this. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. We don't know what the, the then was. We don't know what caused them to call upon God. But, but there was some event. The scriptures don't tell us. But it was at that point. Matter of fact, it's the first mention in all of the, the Bible. The first time in the Old Testament where it tells us people began to pray. So we don't know what precipitated it. We don't know what caused people to really start to pray. But I believe this is one of those moments in time. Hopefully, we can be able to say then, then, at that moment, during that crisis, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. Let's do that before we worship God in music and praise. Father, thank you tonight that we can call upon you. That at this moment in time, we have a God who's in control. We have a God who is seated upon a throne. And there are angels, a multitude of angels that no man can number, that are worshiping and honoring and praising and saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And we worship you tonight, God. We call upon your name. We need you, Lord, as a church, as a people, as a nation, as a world, God. We turn to you, God, and we call on you and ask you to touch us, ask you to heal us, ask you to draw us near to you and strengthen us, Father. Minister to us, Father, we pray. We ask you to bless our time together in every home and every place where people are listening. God, may your presence invade that place, invade that space in a special and a powerful way. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together tonight.
maybe just started checking in now. We just had a time of worship, and um, as part of our worship, we're going to continue um, with our tithes and offerings and our giving. And just want to encourage you, we as a staff have been so encouraged in the influx of text messages and emails of um, you guys telling how encouraged you are by us doing the devos and doing the outreaches, but we as a staff are so encouraged by you and your comments and um, just what you're doing during this time, connecting with us uh, through live stream. And so we just want to thank you for that and encourage you. Keep pressing in. Every day seems to be a new headline, a new breaking news, but God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we just want to encourage you. As things become more uncertain, God stays the same. He has good things for his people and his church. So stay connected not only with the church, but with one another. Before we um, just pray over the offering, we do want to remind you that we have four very easy ways in which you can give. You can give through our church app. So if you already have our app, there's a give button right on the bottom. You can give that way. You can give on our website at victorychurchri.com. So if this, if you're newer, if this is the first time you're tuning, tuning in and you've heard about the ministries that we're giving to and you want to help support it, you can just go right to our website and there's a give button right on the top right hand corner. Um, you can also text to give. We've put up some graphics in our Facebook feed of just different codes where you can text in a matter of seconds to be able to give. All you have to do is do the amount and then the code. So our codes are simple. If you want to give to the tithes and offerings, the keyword is just tithes. If you want to give to missions, guess what? It's missions. If you want to give to the capital campaign for the youth expansion, all you do is the amount and campaign. And for youth, if you want to give, if you're watching tonight, you can put in um, for Speed the Light, STL, and that's it. And then lastly, groceries. As Pastor Richard mentioned, we're going to be doing another grocery drive, and it was so successful because of your giving. So if you want to continue to give to that and you want to text, just text the amount and groceries to 84321. Um, I just want to share um, a scripture that is just so powerful. I've been reading it over, and it says this in Proverbs 23, 4 through 5. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches, and they are gone. For they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. And how many of us can just attest to that scriptural truth of riches are gone sometimes. And you see our stock markets, you see things shifting. And, and where people had money and now they don't, people are panicking. We have to look to God as our provider, especially in these tough times. And so just what that says, do not wear yourself out to get rich. Our lives aren't made to get rich. God does bless us, but that's not where we hang everything on. And we want to encourage as you give tonight what you've already given through. Look what we have been able to do as a church already. Yesterday, if you could have been here to see the success, to see the families who were impacted. Uh, a young man drove his car down the street and asked where the groceries are. He was wearing a nice suit, had a nice car, but he just said, my wife and I were just laid off and they're starting to panic about groceries and he wanted to know where it was. He sped into the parking lot and we were able to bless him and his wife. Countless stories of just people in our community who are suffering and because of your giving, we are still able to impact our community and that's a powerful, powerful thing. And so we just want to give you let you have time to just give even now. Just take a moment, do one of those things. The fourth option is also you can still write a check. So if you want to take a moment, write a check or even put cash in an envelope. Our offices are still open so you can come and drop it off in the mail slot, call ahead, let us know. That way we can get it. But thank you so much for your giving. I'm going to take a moment and pray over every household, over every family, just that God would continue to bring increase, not just physically in your bank account, but spiritually to your mind as well. Just join me as you're in your living room. Just hold hands with your kids or your husband, your wife. And, and Lord, we just pray right now, God, that you would just touch every household tonight. God, those who have been giving faithfully, I pray, God, that they would see an increase, God. Not just physically, but God, they would feel you spiritually in their mind that you would bring peace to them as they look to you in these uncertain times. God, we thank you for those who are giving of their tithes and offerings. We thank you for those who are continuing to give to the capital campaign, to the missions, God to the youth who are giving to speed the light. And Lord, those who gave for the groceries, God, to be able to provide food 
and toiletries to families, 87 families. God, thank you for those who gave. But God, bills are still coming in. God, we are still called to minister to our community. So those who give tonight, I pray that there would be more increase, God, that they would continue to look to you as these weeks go by. You are our provider, and we believe that, God. And we just pray a blessing over this money that comes in. Let it be multiplied, God, and let it go out to advance your kingdom here in Providence and throughout the world. And it is in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for your giving. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving to the Lord and uh, just being a committed part of the community of faith here at Victory Church. Well, God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to just take a few moments to look into the Word of God. And if you're commenting, would you just comment an amen or uh, just just repeat something I said? Just let's engage with the word of God. Let's engage with the message. You know, it is so it is so important that we we focus and we focus on what's important. You know, um, we have time now in some respects that we didn't have before. You know, if you're if you're cleaning your house and you're in a hurry, what happens? Usually you'll you kind of you, you cut corners or you'll you'll just sweep something under the rug or you won't you won't move certain things and and do a, a thorough cleaning because maybe you're in a hurry. But you know what? Uh, I think we might have a little bit more time right now. And I'm not talking about cleaning your house. I'm talking about spiritually. Um, you know, to to take the time to check where your heart is at, where your your thoughts are at, your uh, values. And to do that uh, thoroughness and examination. And so let's let the word of God examine our heart tonight. Let's let the word of God uh, search us and be that light that shines in our heart and, and reveal something that will, will be of lasting value. So are you with me tonight? Just text amen or, or comment amen. Uh, I can't see it, but I'll see it later. Uh, but please, let's, let's stay focused. If there's kids running around, do your best to kind of just quiet them a little bit, get them occupied, or help them to uh, focus also. Uh, those of you that are wherever you're at, let's just, um, just maximize these few moments. Amen? If you have your Bibles, would you open up with me uh, to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1. Um, do you remember a time in school when the teacher or the instructor would say, this will be on the test. This information, this material is going to be on the test. And if you were like me, what would happen with your, with your attention span? What would happen with your interest level? It would go up. There would be a quickening of your attention. There would be an intensity. If you were falling asleep, you would wake up. Why? Because what was being said was going to end up on the test. And you were concerned about your grading. You were concerned ultimately about your, your GPA. And, and you wanted to make sure that you got that information. You wrote it down. You studied it because you realized you were going to be tested on that information. Well... What I'm trying to say to you tonight is something I say from time to time when I do preach or teach the Word of God. I'll say this is going to be on the test. You will be tested. There will be a test. And you know what? In this moment of time, this is possibly the greatest test of your faith. I want that to sink in for a moment. I don't think I'm overstating it, but this is possibly the greatest test of your faith and my faith. We are being tested on many levels, many ways, many areas of our life. We're being tested in and with our families, with our finances, with our future. What is the future going to look like? 
We're being tested in the area of our relationships. And you know what? We're all in this together. And again, our level of pain or effect of, of this crisis might be different. But you know what? We, we are in this together. We might be in different levels of intensity. But you know what? We're all being tested. I'm being tested too, you know. Just because I'm the pastor of the church doesn't mean that I'm somehow immune to the test. I have concerns. I have a wife. I have a son. I have a daughter. I'm concerned for them, for their safety, for their health, for their future. I also, as the pastor, uh, have a concern of, of seven, several hundred people that I'm responsible for and that I care for and I, I feel for and I pray for. I have a staff that I want to keep employed and I'm concerned about them and their safety and their well-being. And you know, for me as a pastor, I feel the weight from those different areas that weigh on me. And it's been overwhelming, to be honest with you. Well, I want to just say thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your concern. I have received calls. I had someone call me yesterday and say, Pastor, can I pray for you? And I said, go for it. And they prayed for me right over the phone. And I've had some of you that have texted me and called and said, Pastor, how are you doing? Not the church, not other, but, but how are you doing? And, 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 and I just so appreciate that. I believe we have an awesome church. And I thank God for that. But we are all being tested. I'm being tested. You're being tested. And so I want to just look at a couple of verses of scripture, just quickly walk through this and give you a, a few uh, points that hopefully will, will encourage your faith and also give some food for thought and help you not only tonight, but tomorrow. First Peter chapter one, verses three to seven. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, I want you to hear that, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. You have been distressed by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not yet have, having not seen you love, though now you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Peter writes about this test that we all face the testing of our faith in, in these scriptures. He is writing, Peter is writing in the first century. He was one of the original 12 followers of Christ, the apostles, the commissioned ones that was with Jesus three and a half years during his ministry, saw, his, uh, saw him do miracles and, and, and preach and teach and raise the dead and heal the sick and, and eventually be, be falsely accused and brought to a, a, a cross, nailed to a cross, crucified, was buried. Peter saw him raised in his resurrected body. And, and Jesus is now ascended into heaven. And here Peter is still on the earth following Christ and fulfilling his mission, just as you and I are 2,000 years later. And he's writing to encourage believers who are going through afflictions, disappointments, and tests and trials of their faith. He is writing to a group of Christ followers just like you and I who are being severely tested. 
Now, they're being tested. Now, again, it's all relative. A lot of times we can look at ourselves and what we're going through and think, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, I'm, I'm going through this. Nobody understands. But I, I need you to look at the scriptures and see Paul is, uh, Peter is writing to people who are facing imprisonment for their faith. They're facing physical attack and even death. Even death. People who will die for their faith in the first century, persecuted, outcast, going through severe trials. And he, he is writing to give them wisdom and insight on how God gives us joy in the midst of the trials of our life. What was Peter concerned with? Peter was concerned with the faith of believers. Look what he says in verse 5. You are kept by the power of God through faith. Verse 7. The genuineness of your faith. Verse 9. The end of your faith. The salvation of your souls. Now understand. As the teacher says. The instructor says. This will be on the test. You will be tested. I will be tested. The question is why? Why does God allow tribulation, trials, pain, suffering? I don't propose to have all the answers tonight, but according to these, this passage of scripture, I want to just give you three quick points. Don't get nervous. Don't, don't switch churches right now. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm just going to take a few more moments. But why the test of our faith? Number one, that your faith might be real. That your faith might be real. Look at it. It says in verse 7, the genuineness of your faith. The genuineness of your faith. What, is, what does it mean when something's genuine? Very simple definition. Truly what something is said to be. Authentic. We want to have authentic, real faith. When someone has leather, a leather coat, a leather handbag, a leather wallet, or, or some, something leather, we, we, we want to know, is it genuine leather? Meaning, is it real? Or is it pleather? But is it genuine? Peter is writing and saying that you have been grieved by various trials. Your faith is being tested so that your faith may, might be real. You see, it's easy to say, I have faith. It's easy to say, oh, yes, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. But it's another thing to live out that faith in the midst of the tests and trials of life. James writes in his, his letter to the early Christians, he says that faith without works is dead. And people were saying, well, we believe we have faith. And you know what James said to them? Listen, wait a minute. If you don't have works, your faith is dead. And, not, and, and you think you're, you're, you're uh, 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 impressing God or impressing someone? Even the demons believe and they tremble. So he was saying that even the devils believe, quote unquote, in God, but that doesn't save them. So faith alone is not enough. And you see, it's not enough to say, I believe tonight. We have to live out our faith, especially now. That our faith might be made evident that it would become genuine and real. You see, we want to have genuine leather, not a cheap knockoff. We want to have genuine faith, not a cheap imitation. There is so much imitation faith. I've said it before. We've seen it in this nation. Christianity is a mile wide, but only an inch deep. What do we mean by that? We mean that there's a veneer of Christianity. Many people pro proclaim their faith in Christ and say they're Christian, but it's surface. It's, there's no depth to it. But the trials of life produce a depth in our life. Now, I'm not talking about doing something foolish. I'm just talking about trusting God, believing that He is going to see us through, experiencing His peace in the midst of a storm, I'm just talking about the reality of our faith as we walk with God right now, in this time, in this hour, in this moment of history, that our faith might prove to be real. Number two, that our faith might be refined. 
Why does, why does God allow testing? That our faith might be real and that it might be refined. What does it say in this passage of scripture? That your faith is much more precious than gold. That perishes though it, it is tested by fire. Listen, we would all love the gold, the metal gold that's worth $1,600 an ounce. Just an ounce of gold is worth $1,600. But, but do we want a faith that is worth more than gold? But you know how that faith is refined? Through tests, through what we're going through right now. You see, a jeweler, a goldsmith, a refiner of precious metals puts the heat to the metal, 2,000 degrees, to do what? To purify that metal, that gold. So what happens? The imperfections, the impurities, the dross comes to the top that it might be skimmed, skimmed off so that what remains is gold. You see, we're being tested by a fiery trial like we've never seen before. Wouldn't you say that's true? That right now... The future is uncertain. The questions are many. Everything's shifting. Everything's changing every day. Our routines have been turned upside down. Maybe our jobs have been turned upside down. Maybe where we work, it's a difficult place. Maybe you're in the medical field as many of our church members are. We pray for them every day and continue to pray for those who are on the front lines, medically speaking. But we're going through a fiery trial like we've never seen before. Remember in the book of Daniel, it was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Three young men in a pagan culture, in a pagan society, but because of their integrity, they rose to pray places of prominence and leadership in, in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, in the Babylonian kingdom of that time. They rose to high degree, but because of their faith, they were persecuted. And we know the story that they were thrown into a fiery furnace. And you know what? When the king threw them in, the Bible says that he heated the furnace seven times hotter. He turned up the degrees on the stove, if you will. He, he intensified the heat. And what happened? They were thrown into that fiery furnace. The Bible says they were bound with ropes and they were, they were thrown in there to, to be killed, to perish. But we know the story that the king threw three men in there and then he went to look and he saw something that blew his mind. He saw something that, that so confused and confounded him and he, and he called his, his, his leadership team, he called his associates and he said, did we not throw three men in that fiery furnace? How come I see four? And he said that fourth man looks like a son of God. What he didn't know was that that fourth man was the son of God. It was, it was the Lord himself in that fiery furnace. Jesus was with them in the fiery trial. And that is prophetic and that is powerful for you and I tonight. Jesus was already in the fire before they were thrown in. What does that mean? That means Jesus is already in your fiery trial. He was already in today, yesterday. He was already here in this crisis that's going on in this world before we got here. Why? Because he is eternal. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He was already in this very moment of time. And Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know what happened to those three men, that, three young men that were thrown into that fiery furnace? You know what? The only thing that was burned on them was the ropes that held them captive. You know what I believe? I believe according to the word of God that we are going to come out better than when we went into the trial. The fiery trial, according to the scriptures, is going to refine us, it's going to purify us, it's going to make us more like our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is the fiery trial that, that purges us, that refines us, that makes us more precious that, than gold. The faith that we have. Our faith is being tested, but we're going to be stronger. We're going to walk taller. We're going to be more than conquerors in Jesus' name. And lastly, why the test of our faith? That your faith might produce eternal results. We, are not, we don't only want a faith that's real. 
We want a faith that's refined and we want a faith that produces results. Look at verse 9. Receiving the end. The end result of your faith is the salvation of your souls. We need a faith in this hour. Hear me. Hear me tonight. We need a faith like Jesus that said, the faith that endures to the end. He that endures to the end shall be saved. This is no casual business. This is no joke. What we are looking forward to, the results that we're looking to is the salvation of our soul. We're looking to heaven. We're looking to eternity. Life on this earth is fleeting. It's a vapor. It's a smoke. It's a haze that appears and it's gone. The real test of your faith is, will you and I make heaven our home? You know, there's a phrase that is quoted four times in the all of Scripture. Quoted in Habakkuk, Romans, Galatians, and Hebrews. And it's this, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Tonight, you and I, as followers of Christ, are having our faith tested. But you know what? Unlike the king who turned up the fire seven times hotter and who was seemingly in control of the furnace and the fire and the trial, our God is in control. I truly believe that. Our God is in control. And God is purifying our faith. He's strengthening us. You know, the reality of our faith or the, or the product of our faith, what we're looking for our faith to be is strong. Amen? Just like this chain, the strength of this chain is dependent or, or is realized by how much pressure it can take. The more you pull this, or the value of this chain is really of how much pressure it can take. Your faith, the reality of your faith, the genuineness of your faith and my faith is how much we can endure, how much we can take. And I want to just encourage you tonight. You see, God is the one that's going to help you to endure. It's not our strength. It's as we wait upon the Lord, we renew our strength. We renew our strength. As we trust in Him, we get stronger. As we go through this fiery trial with Him, we get purified and refined, and we come out better tonight. So I want to just pray as we close, or we begin to close, and just ask God to, to, to bless the Word of God to our hearts. Amen. So Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this Word that has been spoken, these simple scriptures would come alive in the hearts of your people tonight. God, everyone that's listening, God, let their faith come alive. Let their faith be real. Let it, their faith be refined. Let their faith produce results tonight. Father God, bless the word of God to each heart and every mind tonight. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Pastor Maureen is going to come and she's going to read and declare Psalm 91 over your life. And then Rachel is going to close us in a worship chorus. God bless you. Be encouraged in the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Encouraging word. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And we are just so blessed to have Pastor Richard and Pastor Mike, Pastor Lisa, and just always encouraging us and just to continue to press in, press on. And that's what we're doing. Amen. So good to be here tonight with you, and like we've been saying, we do miss you all, and we are praying for you. So tonight I just want to read Psalm 91. You know, with all the fears, people are out there so fearful, but we have the word of God that can keep us so strong in our faith to believe that he's able to protect us through it all. Amen? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. 
You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by the day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give you angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. God bless you. Continue to be strong in your faith. Amen. God bless. you do